The Sesh Podcast, episode 118, take two. Hi, friends, and welcome back to The Sesh. I am Kendall Ray. And I am Janelle, and we are joined by our lovely guest, Hiram. Hello. Yes, otherwise known as Skincare by Hiram. Yes. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so so stoked oh, to be here. Yes. We are so excited that yeah. you're here. Thank you for joining us. We actually just recorded an episode for Hiram's podcast, mm-hmm. Just a Position. So you'll see our little sign here. Yes. Yeah. Which is already up. Mm-hmm. So you can go check that out now. Yeah, we yeah. talked about all below. kinds of stuff. Yeah, we you guys are amazing. We went deep. Bro. We did. Yeah, we did. It was great. That's We're our yeah. style. Super deep. <laughs> Super deep. Um, yes. And we are also joined by our lovely producers, oh, yes. Sydney and, and Corelli. Hello, gals. Yes. It's a whole full house today. Full mm-hmm. house. Yeah. And we're super lucky because not only are we going to be uh, interviewing Hiram, but we are also going to be doing some spicy topics, mm-hmm. some CSI, mm-hmm. having some fun with that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we are we are pumped to get into That's right folks. into things so today. Excited. Yes, and thank you to our sponsors: Modern Fertility, Zocdoc, Base, and Third Love. Whoop, whoop. Shouts out! Yes. Okay, Hiram, so, thank you for coming. Of course, thank you for having me. We are so excited to have you here. And yeah, we have a lot of good stuff to go over. And I'm like low key fangirling a little because I've been a really big fan of you for a long <gasps> yes, time. Me I'm not too. even gonna lie. I'm trying to like act cool, Stop. but for sure, like when you followed me on Instagram the other day, I was like, text, I was like, bro, I, I'm following me on Instagram. <laughs> I'm sorry, it took me so long. No, I literally love fine. listening to your guys' episodes because you guys are such a vibe. So much fun. Uh, thank but you. no, thank you. I mean, it's so great to be here, especially like in person in freaking Colorado because there's not many. There's no creators. one here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we I sometimes know. like feel like loners. Yeah. No one's here. We really are. Huh? <laughs> no, so. it's great to be here. It's yes. been great. Anyways, um, should we go ahead and jump into it? Yeah. Did you, okay, so did you watch the Super Bowl Rihanna concert? <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. It's really the Rihanna concert. Yeah, because there's no way I would watch football. I know literally nothing about football, (laughs) um, except it's a touch down. That's right. That's what it's called. Down. Yeah. Who? And all I know is that Rihanna was playing. She was the only team I know. But you didn't watch her. No (laughs) No, team. (laughs) Team Fendi. That's right, baby. (laughs) No. uh, So I watched clips on TikTok. I have yet to find like a you know a pirating website that has uploaded the entire thing. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I think it's on YouTube actually. Oh really? I I rewatched it last night before I went to bed. Oh shoot! But I wanted to hear it. You know about the. You know, yeah, baby yeah, belly. she that is with a child. Exciting. Yeah, Woo! that was super exciting. So, we had a party at my house last night. We were all watching it, and mm. I started to notice that she was pregnant like the first couple seconds, but I didn't want to be the first one to say it because I'm like, she did just have a baby, you yeah. know, postpartum body, you never really know. So, I was very nervous, but then someone else in our group finally was like, I think she's pregnant. And then I was like, she's definitely <laughs> pregnant, dude. <laughs> yeah. And which was so cool. And I loved how she was very subtle about it. Like, she didn't have yeah. this big moment of, Reveal. Although I kind of would have liked to see that. I kind of was expecting her to at the end be like, like when Beyonce did it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And like rub the belly. Exactly. No, I was so shocked because I was just like, wait, she had her baby like two months. I know. What is going on? And then I realized, oh my god, it's been like way longer than that. Yeah, she had her baby in May. I believe he's a Taurus, just like us. <gasps> hey, yeah. Taurus representation. God, there's three Tauruses in this room. Oh, shit. Yes, oh, and he's a Taurus, too. I love a good Taurus. Hey, good thing mm-hmm. you're a Leo, because I fuck with Leos. Oh, you yeah, do? I do, too. Yeah, I love Leos. A lot of people don't Leo. like Leos. A lot of people think Leo's really? annoying, which I'm like, fair, I am annoying, but I don't think fine. I've ever met a bad Leo, to be honest. Really? Oh, I have. Some My Leos annoy me. My best friend is a Leo. <laughs> I love Leos. Hype up the people around them better than anyone else. Like, y'all know so how true. to make other people feel oh, so good about themselves. So true. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Thank yep. you. Really <laughs> blowing up my ego here. Yeah, we were, we were, everyone <laughs> in our <laughs> office, pretty much, we have, like, a few air signs, but mostly we are fires and earths. Yeah, I really no like water. that vibe. Not no a single waters. water sign right Really? Now. Yeah. Uh-uh. On purpose. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 like, <was that> no, <laughs> not intentional. <laughs> oh, anyways. Yeah, okay, so back to Riri. Yes. I mean... Like Kendall and I were talking about last night, really, I love Rihanna. She's amazing, yeah. total badass, performing pregnant on stage, like incredible. But I will say, I was expecting a little more from the whole production mm-hmm. standpoint, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. more props, m- more outfit changes, mm-hmm. just a little bit more, a little bit more lights, well, like yeah, production value. Yeah. I mean, it's hard comparing her to last year. We had all the. The rap greats. Yeah. You know, that was, that was really fun. 
Um, and then obviously J Lo and Shakira the year before yeah. that was like unbelievable. So yeah. and Gaga mm-hmm. jumping Diving in. in that was iconic. <laughs> God, I, I mean, love her so much. The meme of the century. Yeah, yeah. seriously. How no. can you top that? <laughs> no, like my real. friend texted me last night. She was like, "I think Rihanna's performance might have been better than Beyonce's when she performed for Super Bowl." Oh, and I was really? like, oh, "Hot take. dangerous words." Yeah. And like you said, love Rihanna. <laughs> the clips I've seen, though, I just it, uh, you know, it just didn't compare. I don't it know. wasn't as. I mean, she hasn't performed since like I don't know, six years or something. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. I don't even know when the last time. Yeah. And I'm like, come on. Why didn't Other, I don't blame it on her? I blame no, it on yeah, the yeah. the crew, the crew, <laughs> like yeah. the people. Which obviously they have five minutes to get that set together. Right. Tr- right. I saw a sped up version of them Same. like hustling out. And st- it's crazy that yeah. they can set all that up. Same. But yeah, I expected more outfits. There wasn't really any wow moment other than her pregnancy was, I think, the wow moment. Totally. Um, but yeah, I definitely I wanted to hear needed me. I was a little bummed me out about too. that. I wanted to hear unfaithful. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like wouldn't that have been good? Some really throwback. Yes. She did umbrella. She didn't mm-hmm. do SOS though, right? Did mm-hmm. she or? Maybe. Uh, no Ponderible either. Nope. nope. Ponderible. <laughs> <laughs> Major yeah. throwback. I was a little, it was not, but like, it's hard because she was pregnant. So, how much can you really do? They have to consider yeah. her safety. True. And, but the other people, they, could I'm have talking done about stuff. like all the of backup her backup dancers. dancers. They were, they were this, good. But yeah, I feel like they're kind of like, more. where was like the, the marshmallow outfit people? Change. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's yeah. The like men. Yeah. one <laughs> meme that I saw of like all of them running out and it's like ASAP rice sperm running into the <laughs> 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 like, oh my God. <laughs> like, hell yeah. So I'm true though. <laughs> yeah. Loki, I lived for her product placement though. Like when oh, she, yes. her, she was like, that iconic. Was, like brings girl. out the Invisimat. Like, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That was good. We live for it. We live for it. Get your back, girl. She's a businesswoman first and foremost. She's a badass. Like, Major props to Rihanna. Yeah, it was it was good. I'd say out of I w- I was gonna say um, I would give it a six out of ten, but because she did it pregnant, I have to bump it up to a seven. Fair. What do you think? Yeah, I would say six. Also, why were there no guest performers? I will that, say that, that was tough too. Mm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it would have been nice. And I think Jay Z was there. They should have just brought his ass up. I saw him. (laughs) Jay Z, where are you, buddy? (laughs) Surprise! (laughs) (laughs) So I know you only saw a few clips, but what would you rate it? I mean. Shoot. I mean, I would have to agree with you like a six or a seven. I mean, mm. like I have I can't even count how many times I've watched Beyonce's Super Bowl performance. That Same with Lady Gaga's as well. Like Shakira and JLo were so iconic. Like, mm-hmm. so I don't like comparing yeah. because I know everyone's individual performance is their own. But true. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't my favorite from the clips I've seen. Again, yeah. I haven't seen the entire thing from what I know of, but yeah. I've seen like a hundred clips. <laughs> like it would have been cool if there was something like she did umbrella and she brings out an actual umbrella. Yeah, rain starts falls raining from yeah, the ceiling. Totally. Like, yeah. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. I agree. The, like wow factor. Production. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Production mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and the 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 sports teams played. The sports teams played. Yeah, they did. And down to the wire too. Got exciting actually. Really? Very yeah, exciting. Wait, so who won? <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I've, I swear to God, I'd never see anything about football on my for you page. All I saw was Rihanna. Do you know who was in it? <clears throat> I'm not even trying to play dumb. I promise I'm not. <laughs> I have no idea. I, is it Eagles? Yes. yes. Here we go. Oh, Very good. Okay. Okay. One, wow. out of, one out of two. Okay. You get second Eagles guess? against the... Um, like Yankees. <laughs> <Yankees. laughs> the Yankees. You're just as bad as Corelli. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I, I mean, I barely knew who was playing, and I was there last night. So, <laughs> you're, you're Eagles fine. versus Chiefs. Eagles versus Chiefs. I just Chiefs. got annoyed that why were they playing football at a Rihanna concert? Like, I know. That's very, my it's very distracting. Like, very distracting. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, who was the Eagles against? Chiefs. Yeah. Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. And who won? The Chiefs. Chiefs. And it came Barely. down to it. It was an exciting game, which doesn't always happen that way. It, yeah. was, it was very, it was funny. Our little group, whoever was left at the end, like her dad was inside my living room watching. And then me and my dad were out in our like outdoor space. Um, we were like more on the Chiefs side because my grandpa was a Chiefs oh, fan. Oh, I was on so. the Chiefs side. I'm oh, not yeah. an Eagles fan. But I kept, well, you were cold, so you didn't want to yeah. go outside. I was too cold <laughs> to go out there, man. But yeah, it came down to like the last couple of minutes. Uh, it was wow. like 11 seconds left. And it was, yeah, it was yeah, three point difference. So at least oh, it was exciting. Okay. Um, this podcast Chiefs. is now a um, podcast. Podcast. This podcast is now a sports show. <laughs> yeah, so. we do some sports things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely accredited enough to, to yeah, speak on that. That's why we brought you in today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sure you could redo all of their skincare routines. Though, oh, yeah. Some absolutely. of those guys need it. If they need some For skincare real. support, I am there. I just, you know, won't know what team I'm helping. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you could be like the NFL skincare professional. That's I'd be like, oh my God, need. I love basketball. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Basketball>. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> so oh my gosh. But yeah, fun Amazing. times with the Super Bowl. The American tradition. That's right, baby. Oh, boy. Anyways, guys, we have an update for you. Mm-hmm. Getting into spicy topics here. Ooh. George Santos. <sighs> Georgie Porgy George is putting back. lies. <laughs> George, <laughs> That's George is back with oh, some boy. fucking lies, bro. So if you don't know, we talked about George, I don't know, a handful of weeks ago. Um, he is a representative who is the first openly gay Republican representative, and um, he has been caught in a handful of lies. The most recent and spicy one was someone basically did an interview and said that he was doing drag for, I don't know, he was like performing in some drag shows too, yeah. or addressing a drag. Like years ago. And anyways, they he looked great. Yeah, he looked great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. But he was like, hell no, that's not me. And people were like, that's you. <laughs> That's you, bro. And they like found this old forum on like WikiLeaks or something where he's like, it's literally his same birthday and then his um drag name, I forgot what the drag name is. But anyway, so he got caught that and then finally he confessed. He was like, yeah, I was just doing it for fun. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, he had to brush that under the rug fast. Yeah, real fast. <laughs> he's lied about his mom being in 9-11, which is like fucking weird. That's absurd. I don't know. What is he's that? not the only one to do stuff like that. There's a lot of people who lied yeah. about being involved in 9-11. It's, it's such a weird sick. thing. It's, yeah, no, it's like, sick. Get, really a get a hobby. My yeah. God. Yeah, for <laughs> real. Really um, bad. Yeah, his latest lie, though, is... Can't forget about the scarf that he stole. He stole oh, yeah, a scarf. Oh, yeah, he stole his friend's oh, scarf. Mm -hmm. Oh, he you... lied about his finances. Can I, can I tell you something that I found out about that scarf thing? Yeah. Is right after that, whatever we record, I found out that that was for a don't steal the vote rally. Oh, How yeah. fucking ironic that he was still he was wearing a stop stolen steel. Steel. Stop the, oh, oh, yeah. Stop the steal rally or whatever. <laughs> and, and he, he wore a stolen, stolen scarf. scarf. This bitch. Come on, oh, man. God. This guy's like a designer. Not. I think it was like a Burberry scarf. Yeah, it was from a his Burberry. like roommate or something. Yeah. He stole my scarf, man. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, what a not great. Person. Mm, my beautiful. Quality, that's for sure. <laughs> anyways, the latest, because we have to update you. Now we're invested in George here. Okay. So the latest was on February 9th. <laughs> He made an appearance on Newsmax Network where he was asked about his campaign finances and where they came from. And he basically said that he founded his company, DeVolder Organization, in 2001 and paid him a $750,000 in salary. Paid However, himself. yeah. However, George was born on July 22nd, 1988, which means that in 2001, he would have been 12 or 13 years old when he claims to have founded this organization mm -hmm. after he had already quit his previous employment, he says. <laughs> which was a lemonade stand. <laughs> which, we were assuming. <laughs> we were assuming so. In fact, we have a clip. Let's go ahead and watch George talk about this. He looks like he's not been sleeping well after all the lies. <laughs> Bro, he's not doing great. He needs some skincare. <laughs> But if you could be a bit more specific, though, you're kind of talking a little bit vaguely. Uh, you know, for these loans, you know, there's collateral. There are things that, in the past, you've said, okay, it didn't come from Russia, it didn't come from China. Uh, you say legitimately, that's a lot of money. It didn't appear that you had jobs that would provide that kind of income where you can make these kinds of loans. So, I would love it if you could spe be a bit more specific because these are these are real sizable figures. Of course, Greg. The Volder Organizations was founded in 2001 when I stepped away from my previous employment and I decided to go on my own to do exactly what I have did for other companies for years, which is capital introduction, relationship management of high net worth individuals. He's saying it with his full chest, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Full yeah. confidence. So either he's majorly confused or he's <laughs> lying. <laughs> Bro, what? Why are you always lying? Uh, has he addressed this yet? At I least know. be good at it. God, you just look like a fool. <laughs> he is a straight fool. Honestly, I kind of feel bad for him right you now. It's really funny. Really through it. <laughs> After um, he got caught on a bunch of these lies, there's been a, obviously a ton of press at him. Like he was mm -hmm. uh, heckled at the airport yeah. and like chasing oh, him. Really? He was like having a real <laughs> menti bee during that. <laughs> um, <Menti> <laughs> but then he. <gasps> He had like some type of press conference and he tried to bribe all the reporters with Dunkin' Donuts and he like left out a big box of Dunkin' Donuts and coffee. <laughs> he was trying to like smooth things over. Oh He's like, God. bro, it's all good. I got you a dozen donuts here. <laughs> Save all PR response. Oh my, my God. God. Yep. <laughs> yeah, George. Continues to be a disappointment. <sighs> I don't George, know. George. He's like pathological liar zone, I'd say. Yeah. Major. Mm -hmm. Don't want to diagnose him. It's like easy but... to lie for him comes right out. 
Well, I'm like, bro, at least for your numbers, right? I think yeah. he needs the, like a lying 101 course. Yeah, yeah like learn how to lie. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to lie, at least be good at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways. For a lot of us, the start of the new year feels like the right time to schedule your doctor's appointments and check in with where you are health-wise. Did you know one out of eight couples struggle with infertility? Seriously. It's a staggering statistic that most people don't know about or aren't ready to talk about. But we need good data and information about our bodies in order to have informed conversations with our doctors and make the best decisions for ourselves and our futures. That's why Modern Fertility was created. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. You can just mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results in six business days. I used Modern Fertility before I started trying to have my baby and it gave me so much useful information. It gives you insight into your hormone levels, like your ovarian reserve, which is how many more or fewer eggs that you have compared to the average person your age, and other important factors that can impact your fertility. And the results go deep into what every hormone means, and you can also download the results to review with your doctor for next steps. Traditional testing at a fertility clinic can cost over $600, but Modern Fertility tests the same general set of hormones for only $179. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash fetch, you get $20 off your test. Plus, you can get reimbursed for the test through your FSA, HSA. If you want kids today, or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound info about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash sesh. That means your test will cost $159, which is a fraction of what it would cost at a fertility clinic. So get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash sesh. Again, that's modernfertility.com slash sesh. Today we have a little CSI. If you guys are new, because we've only done this, this is the second we've done CSI. Yeah. CSI stands for Crime Sesh Investigation. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we have Hiram to join us for our second segment here. Yes. Let's go. This is wild. Yes. And this is coming out of uh, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Oh, my hometown. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So maybe you can speak on that. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> this happened last week, February 7th. I actually was watching this on TikTok as it was going down. There are tons of people like doing live streams of their TVs because mm. this was being filmed live on the news. Mm. This guy, 23 year old Mason De Champs, right? Mm-hmm. De Champs. Mm-hmm. He calls himself the pro life Spider Man and he Cringe. scaled <laughs> the 483 foot Chase building. Do you, are you familiar with this building? I am, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine going up it? I mean, he had no tools. Absolutely not. Nothing. Not He's in not... the name of pro life. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Right? <laughs> for that. But he didn't have any like you know suction cups or like a carabiner. I don't know. I don't know. Carabiner. I don't know what you climb <laughs> with. It's just his hands and his sneakers. That's it. And he climbed this whole thing, 483 feet, downtown Phoenix. Uh, yeah, without any ropes or climbing gear. And he live streamed the climb on his Instagram account saying he was attempting to bring awareness to an anti-abortion charity that raises money for its efforts to persuade people not to have an abortion. So let's take a look of this yeah, this footage of him mm-hmm. climbing. We have his own perspective and the perspective of the news. So here's that first. Are you afraid of heights? No. Mm, uh, only if I'm like falling. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> We're both pretty afraid that. of heights. Yeah, you're like, watching this makes me want to throw up. Trying to wave yeah. there. To, okay, so uh, here he is. Sky Fox there wedge just moments this ago as they're here. wedged between the two sides there of that <laughs> Hell building. Hell fucking no, dude. Floor. And then he kind of just does these hops. <laughs> Uh, uh, building a, here in downtown Phoenix. It's about, you know how insane uh, this is because Phoenix is such a flat city. There's like barely any skyscrapers. So Phoenix and my man's had to is really to pull away there. You could see the <laughs> yeah, like, oh my God. <laughs> that building right now. Oh my God, he's and, so uh, far up there. Do have law enforcement that, that are on the roof <laughs> and they are continuing to yeah, really like, oh, uh, follow this I love how they got the viewer discretion advice because they don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, they could fall at any moment. Yeah, they were warning like, okay, warning if you fall. Just try to plead I if they would have cut the feet. with the individual and try to uh, have him, them him, securely go down. Oh, what a waste of resources, too. Look at all these people that have to be there. Yeah, the they should just put like a crash pad under him. As, uh, <laughs> yeah, a trampoline. A little trampoline. One of those like little kids. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like Dumbo style. Look at him. To go up there. No, absolutely not. And he's fully like. Nothing else. Oh, the strength. I mean, you have to at least acknowledge that this is. Some skill. Oh, like, yeah. What on earth? Wow. 
going on mm -hmm. right now. And of course, we always try to bring oh, you the, the live feeds that are oh. happening all like in real time. If this was happening, like, Again, if I was watching this, this live, I would have been panicking. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I would be able to get through it because I'd be like, and that. that's, that's what people on TikTok right were saying. Like, this is, I'm like sweating. Yeah. This heart rate. Let's watch the clip of from his point of view. Look at him. He just stops and chills. And sometimes he just has his feet. Oh, hate it. Just casually taking a break. Right. This is a war. He's so casual about it. So yeah, check out his view. The oh, hell <laughs> fucking no, dude. Ew, look at him jumping like that. It's so yeah. scary. I mean, he was bit by a spider for sure. This dude <laughs> is Spider-Man. I'll give him that. Oh, we have to go far down. Oh, that oh, scary. makes me oh, nauseous. How's it going? He's just chilling there. Yes, sir. Sit out of the My camera. thoughts would be telling me to jump. <laughs> the intrusive thoughts would be like, yeah, yeah, going crazy. <laughs> me too. They would get the best of me. Oh. And like, what if you started panicking up there? You're like, oh, he doesn't even have like tape around his hands or anything. No, he's just like raw. <gasps> oh. oh. He's got climbing shoes on. Oh. Yeah, but I don't think they're. <laughs> Do they have suction cups though? No, I think they, they gotta have really good grip. How? Uh, I just don't understand. Like, oh, how? It's just like there's oh. nothing for him to like hold on to. It's, everything's going down vertically. Oh, oh that's scary. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyways, hold on. Guys. yeah, so, yeah. He makes Ooh. it to the top. Um, then he gets it's arrested. Yeah, he was arrested. He was taken into custody on Tuesday after climbing to the top of the tower, and he was charged with one count of criminal trespassing and criminal uh, nuisance, mm -hmm. both misdemeanors. But he's not new to this. He knows that if he gets in arrested, that it's like whatever. Yeah, he gets a few hours, and then yeah. So his next court hearing is February 16th, which is, I thought mm. we thought it was today, but oh, it's not today. Oh, it's the today. day that we, the day this goes live. Yeah, this oh, okay. episode goes live on the 16th. So, so yeah, we'll, we will update in the comments, you know, if he gets jail time or what fines that he will potentially face if he's convicted. Um, and like we said, oh, he went on Tucky Carr, of course. <laughs> To Tucky go talk Carl. about it on <laughs> February 9th. We have a nickname for everyone. We, <laughs> we love nicknames. We do. <laughs> <laughs> of course he went on Tucker Carlson. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not surprised. No. He told Tucker Carlson that he was raising money for a woman named Hope who was 22 weeks old, pregnant, and partially Two, disabled. 22 weeks pregnant. What did I say? Old, pregnant. Oh, 22 weeks, 22 old. weeks pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, abortion is murder, and that is the truth. Yet so many people my age are scared to speak the truth. They are scared to offend. They are scared to lose friends, but we can't be scared. Abortion is just like uh, climbing a skyscraper. It's a matter of life and death, and we do not have time for fear. Sir, mm, I'm going to disagree on that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I would just always be perplexed by people who choose to protest in a fashion that does not relate to whatever they are, mm -hmm. whatever issue they're trying to raise awareness for. Yes. Like people like throwing like spaghetti sauce and like paintings to like raise yeah. awareness around like climate, climate change. change yeah. yeah. Or in this instance, I'm like, what? What do you? What do you think this is doing exactly? I, I don't understand those type of protests. I mean, and it like it kind of works because he's getting a ton of eyes on him, and he gets to go on Tucker Carlson because if he if he hadn't done this climb, it, like it, the wow factor. But also, I do agree, it's stupid as fuck. But <laughs> but also like I mean. From watching that, I would have never guessed that's like a pro, exactly. like a right. pro life. Right. I'm like thing. related in some fashion yes. to where it's at, like, I don't know, a better analogy or a better mm -hmm. metaphor at the very minimum, or at least showing something that's related to what you are protesting. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't understand it. So true. Cause so many people who are watching it on TikTok, because several clips went really viral on there and it said nothing about what he was doing yeah. before. Mm -hmm. People were just like, this guy likes to climb things. Right. So. Yeah, I totally agree. But this is not his first time mm -mm. doing this. Mm -mm. Um, he's scaled a ton of buildings before. Uh, one of them was the 600-foot Aria Hotel in Vegas back in 2021. Mm -hmm. And this was to protest Nevada's COVID-19 mandates. Right on brand. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's done that. He's climbed the 1,000-foot uh, Salesforce Tower in San Francisco to encourage people to donate to his pro-life charity, GoFundMe. Let's see. He's climbed the New York Times building, 721 feet, where he hung a sign on the building uh, sixth and seventh floors that said abortion kills more than 9-11 every week. It's so obnoxious. That is very, yeah, not a good take. That's very insensitive. Yeah, mm -hmm. horrible. Yeah, and for him to be climbing a tall building and the idea that he could <gasps> oh, fall, yeah, it's just all very icky. Yeah, uh. I hate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why are you, yeah, 
That's just so... You're going to climb a building and talk about 9-11? Yeah. Disrespectful as fuck. What's his connection between COVID and the, scri- the skyscrapers then? I don't because it's like his know. He gave probably because he did it in Vegas in a tourist location. I'm he sure was mad was at because for a while, yeah, Vegas had like really strict like everywhere else basically. And but because of pissed. the casinos, yeah. Mm. I guess I'd be curious to see if his form of protesting like actually works to like raise yeah. money and does it actually make a difference yeah. in the grand scheme of things? Because yeah. looking at that, me personally, I would have never guessed. Well, mm-hmm. people do this as like a hobby. People like it's yeah. called bouldering, um, or like. Um, I thought it was buildering. Buildering, sorry, buildering. Mm. It's called buildering, um, or like urban climbing, and people do this as like a little hobby, kind of like parkour. So I'm like, mm, I just don't understand the connection between his cause and bouldering. There's, <laughs> there's, I don't know. He's an outdoorsy man. <laughs> I don't freaking know. A Spider Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's also hung a huge banner with an image of a fetus that called out a specific doctor he accused of killing the baby. Oh. He's climbed the Ritz Carlton in Los Angeles um, and then spoke on his Instagram later and was like, today I'm speaking to the UC Board of Regents to pressure them to stop fetal organ harvesting. So pray for that. Like, all right, dude. Wow. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Not and, great. Yeah. He says he doesn't plan on stopping even after this last one, yep. despite warnings that he has received by authorities. So what will he climb next? I really would wonder what his sentencing is going to be like. How? Because yeah. he's a repeat offender. So yeah. like, I don't know if that like contributes to like it anything. Definitely could. I yeah, the judge we'll could decide to be stricter on him. If yeah, for sure. If you've had other incidents, so. I just worry that one day it's not going to end yeah. well for him. Yeah, and that's the ultimate sentence, right? Yeah, not good. Um, but on this topic of pro-life, pro-choice, um, I know that we've talked about this in this past, but we actually have a piece of merch on MileHighMerch.com. Uh, 100% of the proceeds go to the National Network of Abortion Funds that helps um, allow people get the, getting the resources to receive safe and legal abortions. Um, so if you want to support, head on over. And yeah, that's a great way to make yeah, a donation. Quite a few available. So. Yeah. Go get yeah. them. So I just saw that uh, Mason allegedly raised $7,000 for the organization during his climb of the former Chase Tower. Oh, wow. 7000 Damn. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So we got to mm. raise more than that with our. <laughs> yeah, let's go, yes. people. Yeah, we got to do t-shirts. the numbers. Um, oh, the we've latest. raised more than that. Yeah, we've yeah. definitely raised more yes. than that. We've got to get the latest <laughs> oh, number, yeah. though. We haven't calculated in the past couple of weeks, mm-hmm. but yeah, you guys are s- still constantly buying them. We've been running that since Roe Ro versus Wade was. Yeah, back in yeah. June. Yep. When yeah. the country took a shit. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, anyways, okay. um, hopefully he continues to safely climb. I mean, <laughs> I don't really. I don't know. Or just stops. <laughs> yeah, that would be fine too. Just stops. <laughs> no, at least have a few ropes for the yeah. next. Seriously. Yeah, belay. Get a sesh. fucking belay, dude. Buildering <laughs> sesh. <laughs> Maybe we should um uh, climb a mountain and then do the podcast on there. Uh, I mean, I think you guys are doing great with your t-shirts as far as. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we need to, <laughs> don't have to climb, climb anything. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm, that's right. Okay, fine. So I have a habit of overpacking because I'm never quite sure exactly what I'm going to need and I never want to be in a situation where I'm on a trip and I end up needing something that I didn't pack. And of course, size matters. But as they say, it's not just the size of the boat, it's the motion of the ocean. And with my Bay's Weekender bag, there's room for everything. They've got super chic designs that are also very functionable. And you'll get all of the nooks and crannies and even some surprise space to effortlessly fit it all in. So you don't have to settle for anything less. Base was created by actress Shay Mitchell, who I personally am a big fan of, and she sought out to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories designed to help you travel effortlessly while still looking fashionable. Base has thought of everything you could ever want in a piece of luggage. 360-degree gliding wheels, a cushioned handle, built-in weight indicator, which is so genius, washable bags for your dirty clothes, and all the interior pockets you need to keep organized. And their luggage comes in multiple sizes and colors, so for those shorter trips, the Weekender bag is super functional and even has space to put your shoes separately, which is such a genius idea. I love the fact that there is a bottom compartment where I can put my shoes or even my dirty clothes throughout the trip, and that it keeps it separate so it doesn't get the rest of my stuff dirty. And every piece is made to look better with miles, so you don't have to worry about it in cargo or overhead. 
and Base has over 30,000 five-star reviews. Whether you're packing for a quick trip or looking to breeze through the security line, Base has your personal items covered. And right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash sesh. Go to basetravel.com slash sesh for 15% off your purchase. That's B-E-I-S travel.com slash sesh. All right, we're back with Hiram. So, Hiram, if people who live under a rock who don't know you, (laughs) can you tell us a little bit about what you do on the internet and how you help people with skincare? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, as I always like to say, I'm just someone who's way too obsessed with skincare. I love teaching people about how to take care of their skin, how to improve their confidence, and like find those little moments of like self care. Um, I mean, it started off just as a passion of teaching people about ingredients, um, about products to help people save money. Um, And I never expected it it to turn into anything more than that. But um, I was able to just grow a lot online. And then now I have my own skincare brand. Amazing. Selfless by Hiram. It's awesome. It's built at Target and online. Yep. Yep. Target and online. Yep. We just launched. So that's been an incredible journey. And then, um, yeah, just creating content online, hopefully helping people just learn more about how they can take care of their skin is honestly the ultimate goal. So I love that. That's what I do. And yeah. you have amazing skin. So oh, yeah, seriously. Thank you. Like, I didn't use looking to, at so you thank like, you. what the hell? <laughs> so jealous. I literally got this breakout like two days ago and I was like, Ugh, I'm going worst. on the podcast. It's horrible timing. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. That was the worst timing, right? Is there really something to different areas of the skin, like where you break out and why? You know, there's like theories. There hasn't really been any like scientific like study confirmation of like, because you know how you see like face mapping and like, yeah, if you break out in this area, then it's something with your liver, it's something with your diet, you know, whatever. Um, It's mostly just theorized, but I never discount like anecdotal experiences. Like Mm. I know for me, there's not really a huge link between always like what you eat and breaking out. But if I have candy, I will always break out really um, yep that's what this is <laughs> Interesting. i like had a little bit of candy and i was like fuck i broke out so there is some link there and so if you personally notice it in your skin then i say always listen to your skin you know yeah i wonder what it would be like because i'm not a very healthy eater <laughs> i'm not a bullshit honestly and i'm like i wonder what <laughs> happened if i like really ate a clean diet for a while when mm-hmm. i just like not have breakouts yeah. but i'm well, like you know, the good food acne thing, i don't know <laughs> like the biggest thing with people who struggle with hormonal acne that i have been told um is like cutting out milk hell is no like the cheese is my favorite <laughs> 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 i agree that it's not a sacrifice i'm willing to make yeah but that's apparently like a huge link between i don't know it's, it's all theorized you know i kept getting ones above my eyebrows like here here mm. like last week and i started looking it up and it said liver and that maybe you've been drinking too much. And I really don't drink. I can't even think of the last time I drank. I think it was here on, well, I guess last night at the Super Bowl party. But before that, when we did the Tom Hanks drink, that was like the oh, last yes. time I had had alcohol. The cocaine? Yeah, it's called cocaine. Have you heard of this? <laughs> Sorry, that took me back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is not alcohol now. <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's champagne and Diet Coke mix. Tom Hanks has started this. So we, oh, we tasted wow. it on the show. It's hey, actually good branding. Good. Talk about good that, branding. Right? Wow, I know. yeah. It's real good. <laughs> really? Like, that's really good. Yeah, we gave it a oh. 9 out of 10. We were all impressed. Damn, okay, I'll have to try. But yeah, I'm like, is it my liver? Like, what is going on? I mean, who knows? You know, it's, it's all about personal experience. It yeah. could totally be linked. It just really depends on the individual person. And like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've known I noticed for my skin, like I used to have like pretty bad skin and like, thank you for the compliment. A lot of yeah, people comment on my skin. I'm like, oh, thank you, because I used to have. So when I was 17 years old, what got me into skincare in the first place is that I had severe premature wrinkles on my face really? when I was in high school. Wow. Yeah. So like deep set ones, my forehead around my eyes, like really deep set. And when I went to college, my closest friends like talked to me. They were like, Hiram, you look really old oh my for your god age. you should start taking care of your Aww. skin but i'm so glad they said that yeah. because they were like you should start taking care of yourself i mean and i grew up on a cattle ranch in the middle of arizona so i had no concept of self-care and mm. once i started learning about ingredients and like skincare and all that and then i noticed the results in my own skin i was like shit okay mm. this actually works and it's not just something you know rich people use to make themselves feel fancy <laughs> yeah you know, the luxurious skincare experience mm-hmm. like this stuff actually works and so it's just been a journey of trying to help other people with that. And I that's what that. I've always loved about your content, too, is you'll talk about a wide variety of products, like more mm-hmm. high-end stuff, but drugstore options as well, which mm-hmm. is really important. 
Yeah, I'm like a firm believer in accessibility because when I first got into skincare, I was like, oh my God, like that's way too expensive. I yeah. can never afford to do that. Like mm-hmm. that's only for rich people. And back then, to be fair, there wasn't a lot of good drugstore options. It's true. Nowadays, oh, it's just the most chef's kiss, like beautiful selection of affordable skincare. But that was yeah. always my goal is like teaching people how they can take care of their skin without having to spend a lot of money. You know, yeah. people who can't go to the dermatologist, yeah. you know, get treatments and facials, facials and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like most, uh, maybe not most, but a lot of people can't afford that. So right. yeah. that was always my goal with my videos. Yeah, Absolutely. I think you've done a great job of that, of really mixing it in and, and showing that sometimes the higher end stuff isn't that good. Oh, yeah. a lot of times it's trash. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sorry, I'll just what do you it. think of La Mer? La Mer, in my opinion, is like one of the biggest... Scam is a strong word. Scam. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's very inflated to be a lot more effective and a lot yeah. more, you know, special than it actually is. Because when you look at the primary ingredients, it's mineral oil, petrolatum, like these ingredients. Because ingredients found... don't lie, bitch. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, I love it. Oh, my God. She is watching my videos. I am. I respect it. Yes, ingredients don't lie, bitch. Like, I'm all about that. And for a lot of luxury brands like La Mer, it's primarily, like, you know, very old-fashioned, classic ingredients Mm. that you can find for so cheap. And a lot of these luxury brands will say, like, we have our own proprietary ingredients and we can't tell you what's in our formula because Mm -hmm. it's proprietary. And I just don't think that's a good enough selling point for like a six hundred dollar moisturizer. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, and sometimes higher price products can actually be really good. Mm-hmm. But I believe that like if it's over a hundred dollars, there's no need to be paying that much. You can find yeah. just as effective or even more effective at a lower price point. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's my so take. true. Yeah. So true. What do you think about Botox? Oh, oh, I think you know, there's kind of a lot of criticism out there around Botox. I think. I personally don't see anything wrong with preventative Botox at mm-hmm. all because uh, it can help like, you know, um, kind of offset more long term damage within the skin. But I think it really like depends on personal preference because I am also the type of person who's like, love how you look, you know, like yeah, take totally. care of your skin. But I think like preventing different forms of damage can can be fine. So I know a lot of younger people are getting preventative Botox to prevent like certain wrinkles in the yeah. face, expression lines, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. I think I'd say it comes down to the individual. I'm very person. interested in it. Yeah. <laughs> really? We Have just, you guys gone? Uh, we just did a consult together yeah. last wow. week. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Like, we really want to do it. We're curious. <laughs> I do too. I mean, yeah. a lot of people are getting it like for areas that may be like ex- exaggerated from like, you know, mm-hmm. sun exposure or stress totally. or, yeah. you know, different things like that just to kind of mitigate that long-term damage so well, i have like a bad habit of going like, like squinting my eyes and like mm-hmm. the, like what the fuck look i'm always like <laughs> yeah throughout my whole life and then i'm yeah. like oh shit dude i do the cool it. raised eyebrows a lot like oh, i've got the yeah. major forehead totally, um, lines yeah mm-hmm. i mean i feel like you know uh, have you I, ever done it i just feel like it's better like if it's not changing the way that you look in my yeah, like, personal totally. opinion you yeah. know type of thing like um because it's definitely like been a, i don't know i go back and forth for me personally because i'm like well long-term wrinkle prevention yeah. would, would be really nice but then it's also like well you know i also want to support the message of just like hey, you know love how you look sort of thing so yeah i'm, I'm really all about like the message of like do whatever the fuck you yes. want to do with your yes. body and if it's gonna make you more confident feel good about yourself have i'll it. have at it baby Exactly. But it also like you, there shouldn't be this societal pressure of like, but you need to do it to look young like everyone else. Like, yeah, and if you want to do nothing, me, then that's yeah. fine. Yeah, I'm like it's it's the own you know person's decision. Like, do whatever you want to do. I do not support like shaming people for getting work done. I think that's completely ridiculous. I'm just yeah. like, do, yeah. like people do whatever you want to your body. But I also think you know there shouldn't be um, external pressure totally. to yeah. you know get anything done as well. So yeah. I, I don't know. That's yeah. my personal. I agree. Take. Going back a little bit, let's talk a little bit about your personal life, if you're cool with that. Yeah. I think people would find that really interesting. So, like you said, you were born in Prescott. Pre- yes. Not Prescott. 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 It's like Triscuit. <laughs> like Biscuit, I always biscuit. say. Yep. <laughs> biscuit. That's how the Prescott natives say it. Mm. A, little, a town in Arizona. Yeah, mm. little town in Illinois. Arizona. And you were born into a Mormon family. I was. And you were raised Mormon and yes. pretty heavily involved in the Mormon church for a while. Yeah. You know, when people think of Mormon and like most Mormons they know of, that wasn't really my 
family <laughs> uh, the way we did it. The really? level of dedication um, was... <laughs> I would say it was very similar to a lot of experiences that I've heard from cult um, mm. survivors. Um, it wasn't anything like super extreme with like uh, maybe what you see in like documentaries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the more and more I learn about cults, the more I'm like, wow, that was very much like kind mm. of the dynamic that was present within my family environment because everything revolved around God and our specific religion. Mm. Everything we did, like all the conversations, all the decisions, um, it was all, you know, like <clears throat> for church on Sunday, we would spend like, like five to seven hours, um, there. And then throughout the week, wow. it would be like, I don't know, like six hours of church activities throughout the week as well. Oh my gosh. Um, just, it was very, very devoted, wow. but I will say I, I was always the black sheep of the family who was like, this, I don't want this. I don't like this. Yeah. It's not personally my thing, but are you an only child? No, so I have four siblings. Okay. Yeah. So you've talked a little bit about what that was like, feeling like you had to kind of hide who you really were during yeah. those years. And I'm yeah. sure that was really hard to do, kind of like wearing a mask in a way. Yeah, because it was kind of a, a two-part suppression because there was obviously the part of myself that, you know, recognized I'm gay, you know, and being raised in a very, not only religious environment, but very conservative, closed-minded environment as yeah. well, not only with my family, but my community. Um, obviously, that led to a, a pretty intense level of suppression. Um, but there was also the other part of me who didn't identify with the religious teachings that were constantly present within my home environment. And because it was so dominant, yeah, and that's all <clears throat> the conversations and the focus was for so long, um, I definitely, from a young age, was just like, I, you know, I don't even know who I am. This is, you know, I have to hide everything about myself, suppress everything, mm -hmm. pretend to be someone else completely. Um, hence the, you know, mental health issues that we discussed on my podcast. Yeah. Episode. yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, it was difficult. Um, but, uh, at the same time, I am grateful for a lot of the ways in which I was raised because mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, we grew up kind of in the middle of nowhere with very little money at all. Um, being raised in that suppressive of an environment has made me gain such an appreciation for my own like self-expression and personal <laughs> freedom, freedom. Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, that I'm experiencing now. And just to be able to have my own life separated from that, it's just been s so liberating, such a joy. So, yeah. you know, good how, and bad. <laughs> how many years did you feel like you had to hide your sexuality? Like, when did you know? It, so I remember recognizing when I was pretty young, like five or six years old. And it wasn't because I was like, oh, I like men. But it was more so because in the Mormon church, there's a heavy emphasis on getting married in the temple, mm, you know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. being sealed together forever. Families are forever having children, all that kind of stuff. So from the day I was born, that was, you know, the messages were constantly revolving around that in terms of like, this is your life plan kind of laid out for you. This is the life God wants for you. And this is yeah. what's going to happen. And so I remember when I was five or six years old, like my parents telling me that I was going to get married in the temple to a woman and have children and stuff. And I was just like, I don't want that. Like that is completely opposite of what I want. And I remember being like, okay, I, I don't want to get married to a woman. I could see myself married to a guy, but like, what, what, what the hell is mean? that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm like, right. okay. And for the majority of my adolescence, it was just like push away any thoughts or feelings of, you know, um, recognizing that I am gay uh, because it just was something that I couldn't really cope with in the yeah. moment and it, in the environment that I was in uh, because I knew my personal safety, uh, not only emotionally, but physically could be compromised um, if I were to ever allow myself to even like fully think about that, let alone accept that and you know right. share it with the people around me how old were you when you decided like oh this isn't something that's just gonna go away that i can push away like i have to actually kind of work through this i remember because i remember like first mentioning to my mom a little bit um i remember she had said to me like Hiram, are you, you know, attracted to any girls? Like, are there any girls that you have a crush on when I was in middle school? And I was just like, no. And honestly, I don't want a girlfriend. Um, I didn't say I was gay or anything. I was just like, I'm just an independent person. I want a girlfriend, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, you'll change your mind. You'll change your mind. You'll come around. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and like, I was like, like, I will oh, prove her no, wrong. No, I won't. Yeah. And I did. I guess <laughs> I proved her wrong. Um, <laughs> when I was in high school, I remember being like, okay, this is not going away. This is not just like a phase or, yeah. you know, whatever they say. This is something that is a part of me. But <clears throat> I wasn't really able to accept that until I moved away from home and went to college uh, because that's where I was able to. I mean, I was in Hawaii, so I was in a much more open minded environment yeah. um, where, you know, I didn't hear and see homophobia just occurring literally in front of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it also gave me the space away from negative influences and family to be able to reconcile with that and, I, you know, figure out what my identity was. So the reason you moved to Hawaii was for college? Originally, yes. Okay. But at that point, um, I hadn't initially planned on going to college. I just wanted to get out. <laughs> I was gotcha. like, get me out of this house. Get me out of yeah. this town. I need to leave ASAP. Um, and I thankfully was able to go to college. And that's when, um, that's what inspired the move to Hawaii. Have you ever had some health problems going on? You can't quite figure it out. So you text your group chat of friends and see if anyone has any idea. Well, sometimes friends can be helpful, but the best place to get quality medical advice is from a doctor that you can find on ZocDoc. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. ZocDoc can help you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care that you need and deliver the type of experience that you want. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who's patient reviewed fits their needs and schedule just right. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you and your favorite doctor that you haven't met yet. Now, I've been using ZocDoc for a long time now, a couple of years, and I have found a ton of great professionals through ZocDoc, and I truly recommend it. Now, I won't go see a medical professional without reading reviews first. It's just so helpful and gives you an idea of what to expect. You can browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information right through the app and get the care that you need. Plus, and if you have a busy schedule, you can find a time that works for you. That's one of the best parts of it and a lot of their doctors are available within 24 hours. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. To get started, go to ZocDoc.com slash sesh and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash sesh. ZocDoc.com slash sesh. Was there anyone where you grew up who was gay and out that you could see and be inspired by or did that just not exist at all there was one person i knew of um only one in my high school and he had been raised in a pretty liberal environment in a different state mm. somewhere else and had moved in um wow and that's hard yeah which was rough because my town is just extremely difficult thankfully the high school environment i was in was relatively like I didn't see like a lot of, I, of course, there was like casual homophobia, but there wasn't mm -hmm. like life threatening level homophobia yeah. there. And uh, mm. and so everyone was pretty accepting of him. And I was able to connect with him and kind of like ask him questions, you know, oh, purely objectively. Like, sure. yeah. tell me about your experience of being gay. <laughs> 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 um, but thankfully, he didn't have too negative an ex of an experience. I was able to kind of see uh, him be his authentic mm. self and. Um, become inspired by that but I think because there was just so many ties to my family and people yeah. I'd grown up with and you know it, it was still actively heavily uh, discouraged in my church there yeah. was just no possibility of me ever being able to come out while I was living at home but mm -hmm. I was able to come out a few years later publicly so when you first went to Hawaii you went to a Christian university right I did so wow, it was a little bit of freedom but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was yes. still had its own challenges it did um and primarily because the school i went to had heavy uh, a very intense honor code they called it mm. where you had to in order to keep going to school there you had to follow like these ethical responsibilities so mm. like being gay was not like it was just not accepted at all um so that was also difficult um but thank god i was in hawaii which hawaii is so open-minded so liberal yeah that's great. um that people were very accepting of that but even in my you know college experience i was like oh my gosh like i still can't fully be authentic to myself oh, i still yeah. can't be open about this you and know? that's so sad because especially in college when you're really trying to find yeah. out who you yeah. are and like what your life is you want it to be like and the person you want to be to not be able to feel like you can safely explore that is 
very unfortunate. So unfortunate. Yeah. I know. And especially in like an environment where the whole purpose of going to college is to like educate yourself, become more open minded, right. learn more about other people in the world. It's just ironic, you know, at yeah. some point. And that's one of the big reasons I inevitably dropped out. I mean, I mostly dropped out because I was super broke. <laughs> but like I was like almost homeless. What were you yeah. studying? So I was studying international cultural studies, um, entrepreneurship, and anthropology. Oh, that was kind very of like cool. Three tiered. Awesome. Um, um, yeah, pursue. Cool. It was amazing. Like I yeah. loved my study, but the social environment and the inclusivity as far as like openness to gay people at that time was just very not. Not, not great. So sure. leaving school was a huge step forward. And when I was really able to like publicly come out um, and really fully be authentic, really only came after after college. And that was like, ooh, like six years ago. Can I ask what your family's response to that was? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so unfortunately, not positive. Yeah. Um, and it, it depends on the family member. But for my parents, they essentially disowned me. Um, when I came out to them, it was a, it was a sad experience, um, because I had tried to go back home to live with them for a short time in order to kind of like repair the relationship. And that's when I was able to like fully come out to them. And I thought it was going to go super well. You know, I had these kind of like dream ambitions of like, oh, they'll, they'll love me. They'll accept me sort of thing. Um, but they made it very clear that if I was to choose to be gay, Mm. as it was said in their (laughs) eyes, that I would not have a place as their son and I would not have a place in their lives. So oh yeah, it's, it was very disappointing. So unfortunately. Traumatic. Yeah, it, it was, it was rough, but I really like to look on the bright side because I think I was able to go through the experience of finding my chosen family, you know, like, yeah. sur- I, like I feel so lucky to be able to pick the people I want to have as my family who are the most supportive, most loving, because you don't always see that. And especially in Mm -hmm. the gay community, there's so many people I know who still have to deal with their very toxic, homophobic, unaccepting, Mm. closed-minded family members. And I think for me, like it was, as much as it was a bad experience, I am, you know, at some level grateful for it because it led to me having such a beautiful chosen family that oh, that's today. a really wonderful yeah, way of thinking about that's it amazing yeah, yeah. sometimes you got to focus on the positive to get through <laughs> for sure, <laughs> the yeah, for sure. Of it, you know oh, i was just gonna ask if um you've had any different experience with your siblings oh yeah, yeah. so with my siblings um it has it depends on the sibling but there was definitely a lot more support um that's and good. i you know i think that comes from you know, we're we're just younger, different generation, you know, yeah. more more acceptance. I think with my parents, it was just that I think they're just too far gone, you know, between religion, totally. between a home environment, community, the way they were raised. I just think it was just, you know, there wasn't really hope there. But for my siblings, there's definitely been a lot more acceptance. That's so good. that's yeah. good. I'm glad to hear yeah. that. Yeah. I'm glad it's, to hear it's that. It's been good. But honestly, it was even though it was a hard decision. I felt like my life really began once I was able to come out because it wasn't just an expression of sexuality. It was full, just open self-expression, unapologetically being able to show yourself to the world in every capacity, you know? Um, Which I feel like is the thing that every single person deserves and should have, but unfortunately it's just not the reality in so many situations, um, which is so unfair. So I'm guessing you have no relation at any point point with the mormon church now or the religion okay (laughs) (laughs) i mean i am not the type of person who actively hates the church per se but i will say i will always not be in support of any institution that discourages Mm. recognition or acceptance of any type of person you know amen love that that absolutely any institution all religions and everything so um, I'm not the person that's like, Mormons are bad, blah, 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 yeah. you know, sort of thing. There's so many Mormons I still know that are really good people, but I just personally cannot support an institution that yeah. treats people that yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Have you been able to find kind of your own spirituality or like your own take on, you know, the spirituality? spiritual realm or yeah. <laughs> do you have any like personal beliefs even if they're not attached to an organized religion yeah that's a great question i actually feel like i'm kind of currently going through like a spiritual um like identifying my spirituality um yeah. because for so long what it has been for years was just like i don't want 
to even think about anything mm-hmm. that has to do with like a god or afterlife or anything like that because of the heavy religious trauma. Of course. But over the you know past few years, I've been able to unpack and heal a lot of that religious trauma um, to where now I'm way more open to spirituality. And I actually personally identify with um, Taoism. Uh, Mm. so like, uh, art of the Tao. I'm not sure if you guys have like read the book. Like I love Taoism, very similar to Buddhism, but the Mm -hmm. main emphasis is just essentially like, don't worry about the afterlife. Stop worrying about like punishment. Um, you know, focus on helping others make the world a better place. Let's focus on how we can uplift each other and essentially karma as well. Um, there's mm-hmm. a lot more to the teachings, but that's essentially yeah. it. And I really identify with that because that's always something I've really believed. So I don't know. I'm still somewhat agnostic in the sense that I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to happen in the afterlife. I don't necessarily know if there's a higher being. Wouldn't be surprised if there is one. Um, but I I refuse to let myself kind of live out of fear Absolutely. of that, which I think so many religious people unfortunately do. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I find it's a very comfortable place to be to just admit that we have no idea, no idea. and to just live our life day to day and mm-hmm. do the best we exactly. can. And I've always felt very comfortable with that as my spiritual. Place. Exactly. I'm, like, I'm definitely along the same lines as you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's something more to this life than just what we're living day to day, but I don't know for sure. And really, my whole thought is like, well, if I know that I'm living my life trying to be the best person I can be, like that's pretty much all I can ask of myself, you know? Exactly. Because I think there's such a power in being able to genuinely desire to be a good person, regardless of any existential consequences. Like I'm doing this to get into heaven. Like, okay, that's great. No, but like for me (laughs) personally, yeah, exactly. I'm like, that's an interesting thought of like, well, how genuine is that? And I'm, you know, I'm not here to like, obviously you can believe whatever you want and have motivations to do and live your life because of certain things but it is fascinating to me that it feels like a lot of times like are you really living an authentic life if yes. you're constantly thinking of what you hope is on the other side mm-hmm. yeah you know? exactly like i i really fall under the belief that like some of the best people i've met are heavily religious some of the best people i've met are atheist it, it, i don't necessarily view religion as a determining factor of morality you know that's such a good and i think it. for me personally because of my personal experiences, I prefer to go through like making life decisions based off of, you know, what can help other people make other people's lives better. How can I contribute to the world and make the world a better place? And then I'll figure out the the rest of it. Yeah, like yeah. God and afterlife. I'll, I'll yeah. focus on that later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I think that's, what, that's my take. I think when you spend too much time worrying about what's going to come after life, you like don't really get You're to losing. absorb what's going on yeah. now. Because all that we know is for sure real right. is right here. Exactly. Right? And we exactly. don't even know that because Elon Musk says that we're in a fucking simulation. <laughs> yeah, so true, I don't yeah. even know. <laughs> that is a very <laughs> I know who honestly knows. I know we have a lot of viewers who are um in the LGBTQ plus community. What yeah. would you say to people who are struggling with finding that support at home, who maybe can't leave right now for financial safety, whatever reasons they're too young, um, who don't have that circle of support that they're looking for and feel stuck you know much in the sense that you did back in the day what would you say to those people and like what piece of advice could you give them that is such a good question like i I love that question thank you and to anyone who's listening who may be in you know a situation where it's not safe for you to come out i just want to let you know like first like hold on just like keep going strong because it does get better and you will get out of that environment and that situation. Mm -hmm. I will also say there are some people who recommend that like coming out is always a good thing and it's always admirable and you should always do it. (laughs) Having experience with not being in an emotionally or physically safe environment, I think that there is absolutely no shame in waiting until you are safe. I actually Mm -hmm. recommend that like Make sure you're in a safe environment. Make sure you're surrounded by people who are accepting of you. Mm-hmm. And don't feel pressure, you know, to, to come out. Just, like, take it one step at a time mm-hmm. whenever you feel ready. Um, I know for a long time I was like, oh, my God, I will never come out. Like, that's never something I want to do. I'm just too scared. Mm-hmm. Um, and I honestly never thought I would. And then it just kind of happened where I was like, oh, you know what? I think I'm ready. And I think this is something I want to do to help others. But no shame in waiting. Make sure you're safe. Make sure you're in a good environment and just keep going strong. Because there were so many years where I was like, 
you know, being in an environment where you see absolutely no one who is represented like you. Mm -hmm. I was also in a very like restricted environment where I couldn't even like, you know, really see people online who were similar to me who were like yeah. gay or yeah. talking about their struggles. Um, it felt extremely isolating, but I'm so glad I held on, you know? And so mm -hmm. keep going strong. I love that. I that was good. It's great hearing great it from advice. like, yeah. I don't even, for lack of a better term, like a success story. Like you started off mm -hmm. really struggling and now like you are so open and accepting and proud of who you are mm -hmm. and you're using that to inspire other people and, you know, bring awareness to this topic that desperately needs to be talked about more. It does. And thankfully, you know, the, the thing that makes me so happy is like usually when I'm in an environment with like other gay people, for example, or other people are part of the LGBT community, um, my story will typically be the worst. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good thing because it means that most people and that I've interacted with have had really positive experiences coming out to their families. And I think that's incredible. And I think it it's is. just getting so much better. And at the very minimum, Kids and young people today have so many examples of just incredible LGBT plus icons, you know, that they can look up to and see that they're not alone. So it is getting better, but I hope to share my story to help people realize that it can be easy to forget that there are still families, peoples, and people in places yeah. where being gay is seen as like such a horrible, horrible thing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we got to still stand up for those people. Yeah. Absolutely. And I see that you guys are like, I saw you have both posted about when you've gone to like Pride oh, and yeah. events, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, Absolutely. I, I think mean, that's so cool. We have family members in our yeah. who are part of the community. And I mean, we I feel very lucky that all of me, my step parents, my parents have our whole family is very, very yeah. um, progressive in many mm -hmm. ways, but especially in acceptance. And, that's awesome. you know, I'm lucky, lucky that those people have like been safe enough to be who they are from the start, as, at least as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll always be an ally. And, and I think it's a really, really important thing to keep talking about and discussion to mm -hmm. be had. Yeah. yeah. And it, it does seem like there's been a ton of progress. Yeah. Would you say oh, there's yeah. like from oh, 10 yeah. years ago to where we are now? We're making Absolutely. waves. Absolutely. Like there's so much progress. I think like social media has really revolutionized Huge. that, especially yeah. like TikTok, I feel like it's so much more common yes. that like people mm -hmm. realize that like, wow, most people fall on a spectrum, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's not just this thing that should be hidden away. So right. I think there's been a lot of progress overall. Yeah, especially uh, if you live somewhere where you don't have anyone to look to mm -hmm. that you don't know yes. anyone in your real life. Yes. To be able to get on your phone and see other people and hear yeah. their stories and connect with them. That's huge. Yeah. And something so that just impactful. wasn't around like 15 years ago. And that's why I think every story is so important. You know, like there's yeah. so much power to sharing your story. I'm yes. glad I've been able to share mine. But even if, you know, you're out there and you've had the experience of coming out or you want to come out at some point, I would highly encourage you to like share your story because yeah. you don't know who that could really impact. It can make such a change in someone's life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. For someone who is an ally, what could you say would be the like number one thing that they can do in order to be supportive for people that they know or just people in general um, mm -hmm. of the LGBTQ plus community? Yeah, I think just like consistently being there and showing unconditional love. And I know that's a difficult response because it's not like a check yeah, off the to-do right. list of like, yeah, I'm an ally. I did like this. Broad. You know, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's broad. But I think, you know, Part of the difficulty um, of so many experiences of people within, you know, the uh, LGBT plus community is just this, you know, fear of uh, abandonment because mm -hmm. and I know that's been my personal experience as well, because I did experience that. And I think being raised in environments where you were told that being gay is bad, that it is something you should hide away and that, you know, you, you know, people aren't going to be your friends or you're going to mm -hmm. get, you know, like turn people are going to turn their back on you, all that kind of stuff. I think. um just the showing of unconditional love is the best thing that you can do just so that you're going to be there for the person, no matter what they're going through. Um, just being consistent, staying there. And I, I mean, I, I know as an ally, it can get a little tricky, especially nowadays, like knowing yeah, how exactly to support and you don't want to say the wrong thing. Sure. You don't want to accidentally offend anyone and stuff like that. Um, I'm a firm believer in like intent is everything. And mm -hmm. if you're showing that unconditional love, for me, like if I see that like someone is being like really supportive of me and my journey, it, you know, the little things don't make as much of a difference because I know their heart is in the right place, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. Um, so I'd yeah. say don't worry as much about like, oh my God, I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want right. to mm -hmm. misstep or do the wrong thing. 
if your heart's in the right place and you're showing that unconditional love, then that's what matters. I obviously, I don't want to speak for other people, but I think that, like you said, if you, it's almost showing like, look, I'm, I, I want to do the right thing and I want to learn. And so if I mm-hmm. make a mistake along the way, you know, at least I'm here and I'm trying and I'm putting in the effort to be the best ally I can be. And I'm willing to, you know, listen to feedback, obviously, yeah. and try to keep that in mind for my next conversation or what I, whatever it may be um, so that. I feel like it's better to almost make the mistake versus just not saying anything at all because yeah, you're yeah. afraid of, you know, looking bad or whatever. Yeah, yeah so exactly. True. Yeah. If you're just authentic and you're genuine about it and be honest, if you're like, I don't know much about this. I want to learn. Like, I think for me and my personal experience, the most positive experiences I've had with, say, people from my community or people who may not have been supportive before or were homophobic or whatever it may be, when they came to me saying like, I'm so sorry. I want to learn. Like, how can I help you? Just that is like powerful. You're doing perfect. You know, (laughs) like just the desire to want to do better, the desire to learn, the desire to love. Mm. That's all that matters, you know, and the rest, you'll, the rest will figure itself out. You know, Mm -hmm. that's one thing that I've had like somewhat of a fear about as a parent now, Mm. just like, how do Mm -hmm. I make sure that my child always feels comfortable to be themselves in any situation? And I'm like trying to think of, especially as she's getting older now, ways that I can, introduce her to more things and like make sure that she isn't boxed into just like girl toys right. and i really want her to be able to to find herself and not force anything on her yeah and it's it feels like a huge responsibility sometimes <laughs> you know i yeah. just want to make sure i do it right i think like as long as you're giving your child the opportunities that they're interested in pursuing mm-hmm. that's such a big part of it because i know for me personally i would not have been bothered by you know i don't know happening being in environments around people who don't necessarily like relate to how i identify but it's more so making sure that you're not suppressing who the child is expressing themselves to be whatever that looks like if it's girl Mm -hmm. toys boy toys clothing who they're attracted to whatever it may be like i think you can be such a good parent if you're just showing the love and support behind whatever they are authentically interested in you know yeah but i think the fact they're even aware of that right now like you're yeah. thinking about that at such mm-hmm. a young age just goes to show how serious you take it which i think is wonderful because I, I think a lot of parents just don't think about that and just kind of do what's traditionally yeah normal exactly. quote unquote normal you know like i'm um, not worried about you being a good mother you you <laughs> no, she's under, the best you are mom. you are but yeah uh, we'll be is. an amazing mother Thanks, yeah guys. <laughs> i appreciate that Okay, so you talked a little bit about how you found your passion in skincare because your roommate, right? Your roommate yeah, was like, yeah. yo, like, <laughs> yes. you're looking crusty. You know what I'm just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, bro, you are looking old. <laughs> you got to take care of your skin. Yes. <laughs> okay, how did you go from just being interested in your personal life to being like, I'm going to put this shit on YouTube? Good question. It was quite the pipeline. Um, I think like... So my, my interest in cosmetics had first actually got started through makeup and I became a makeup artist because I was I loved the artistry. I thought it was so interesting. And around that time is when I started taking care of my skin, you know, mm-hmm. uh, using products, learning a little bit about it. Um, I kind of fell out of love with makeup, to be honest. Once I started working as a makeup artist, I was like, mm-hmm. you know, this isn't as much fun on people who just want natural glam every day and don't want to do like a full rainbow cut crease moment, you know, (laughs) type of stuff I loved. Mm -hmm. Um, And so my passion kind of shifted to skincare after that because I was like, wait a second, I am seeing people spend so much money on products and they have no idea how it even works, like what's in them. And if they do look at the ingredient list, it's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Like who knows, who knows what that means? And so that's when I really started like, researching ingredients, connecting with dermatologists, estheticians, just learning as much as I possibly could. And that's how I became passionate about it because of like the science and like mm-hmm. how it's ingredients complicated. Were, oh my mm-hmm. God, it's so complicated. I learn new ingredients every day. Like there's just so yeah. much out there. I, oh bet, I mean, you guys, when you look at an ingredient label, you're probably like, huh? Like yeah. the rest yeah. of us? Like everyone oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. when I watch your videos, though, I'd be like, I recognize that. Hiram said yeah. that's good. Hiram said yeah. to stay away from fa- fragrance, whatever. So <laughs> yeah. no fragrance. <laughs> that's the thing. Like when I started creating content, like I did see that there were skincare content creators out there. So many of which I love. Um, I definitely like was not the first at all. But I think for me, I, I wanted to empower people with, the education they needed to make more conscious decisions when it mm. came to whatever they purchased. So I started creating it in the first place because I wanted to teach about ingredients. I wanted people to be able to know how to read the back of a product and be like, oh, 
this ingredient is good for my skin type. This is how I can help my skin rather than um, making videos about what worked personally for my skin. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you get what I mean. Yeah, yes. like, like empowering the person to be able to figure out what works best for them. Exactly. That's what I really wanted to do. Um, and uh, I didn't think it was really going to go anywhere because I was like, who's going to watch videos about ingredients? Like, this is boring, you know? <laughs> well, you <laughs> I, blew I up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I changed. But, you know, that's that's always been the goal is like not necessarily to be a person that's like, you should. Do buy this. this product because it was amazing on my skin but rather like here's ingredients that will work best for your skin type and help you with whatever you're going through in your i love skin. it mm -hmm. yeah. i love it yeah you blew up fast oh yeah it was crazy i don't know that was wild i still don't understand like, when did you <laughs> what year did you start uploading uh 2017 technically but i didn't start regularly uploading until two 2019 19, yeah. yep was when i was like you know what maybe i'll take this seriously like mm -hmm. i should start posting more and you know be more serious about what i'm trying to teach um but the it was the end of 2019 through 2020 was when it really blew up i think the yeah. pandemic it was just the main thing you know yeah i t i started taking my skin more seriously or trying to around the pandemic yeah. i think i was having a lot of stress acne too during mm -hmm. that time oh yeah and i like mask me yeah stuff like oh that, yeah you know? totally like, oh yeah everyone. god at the start of 2020 janelle and i were uh editing a documentary that we worked on and we both had our skin was probably the worst at that point mine was oh, no. so bad i used to wear god Terrible. like janelle used to just rip me apart i'd wear like what? Yeah, you know, it's going to be like the acne patches. Oh, remember? she would wear like 20 at a time. I was like, bro. <laughs> I literally like sometimes 30. I would have them on every single. What do you think oh of acne God. patches? Yeah, what's your thought? Oh, I think they're great. Um, I think they're awesome because they just help it, your skin heal faster. But it depends on the type of breakouts you're, you know, struggling mm, with. If you have yeah. cystic acne, then like. Mm. My problem is I'm do. a giant picker. Like I see something oh. and I'm like, I have to get it. I have to get it. I have to get it. And they're like, it's gonna make it worse. I'm like, I don't uh. go fuck. And I'm like, it's gonna scar. I'm like, that's what makeup's for. I don't care. Like <laughs> no. I'm going to pick. It. So you don't pop your zits? I'm guessing. Um, I only I, okay. I do pop them, but only if it's like a big ass white yeah, head it's because like, then yeah. because like, then, then it's like ready to burst. burst. It's like painful, and then I I in the past know that it like heals faster once it's that. Yeah. But it's tricky with picking your skin, and like honestly, like the biggest thing I've found to help is just spend less time looking in the mirror. Yeah, that's what I'm doing lately. <laughs> it's good for me. That's hard when you're like on camera all the time too, because I'm watching back. I'm like, ooh. Oh yeah, for real. Yeah. Like that is tricky. But people are like, your skin looks so good. I'm like, dude, it's the ring light yeah. in front of us. Seriously, <laughs> <Trust me. laughs> like, yeah. no, no, lighting makes mm -hmm. a big difference. Mm -hmm. So I am a major bra hater. I do not like the feeling of most bras. They're so uncomfortable. I feel like they're really constricting, and I just overall hate them. But one thing that I do really love is Third Love's bras because Third Love has spent years designing bras for your body. They make over 60 sizes and even invented half cups so you always get the perfect fit, which means you'll always look and feel great. I'm wearing one of their wireless bras and it is so comfortable. I love how it fits. It fits perfectly. The straps don't slip and there's no itchy tags. Whether you're looking for an everyday bra, something with more coverage, an unlined style, or a little extra lift, all of those are available at Third Love. Third Love's best-selling bras are designed to fit and support your body, have a style for every solution and outfit. They'll make you look and feel great in whatever you're wearing. And like I said, they're available in half cup sizes. And I love the fact that they have a virtual fitting room because your bra size can change over six times throughout your life. And Third Love makes it easy to find your perfect bra size with their virtual fitting room. It's like a personal shopper, but better. It looks at size, breast shape, fit issues, and your taste to find the bra size and style that are perfect for you. And it's helped over 20 million women find their perfect bra size and never get stuck with a bad bra again. And of course, returns and exchanges are free for 60 days. Upgrade your bra and get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash sesh. That's 20% off your first order today at thirdlove.com slash sesh. When did Huge you get difference. started into skincare and like? Um, yeah, like really I think 2020. Yeah. Around right the there. time you were blown Literally up. Literally right around, yeah. I'm, oh. I watched... Every single, I like went back. I was me like, right, I'm starting from the beginning. Like, oh, I watched. I mean, like, you've taught me literally like everything I know. Me about too. Here, not that I'm an expert by any means, but like, <laughs> you have for sure. 
Like, At least it's yeah, not happy. Every you. product I yeah. use is because you've recommended it. Yep. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. started well, I mean, wearing sunscreen because of you. Like, they I have. Hope they've made a difference. Yeah. That's huge difference. The only thing I want, you know, yeah, different faces. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely helped a lot. Yeah. 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 Cause yeah. I was going to say, sure. like, this, these breakouts that you're talking about, I don't see them. Like, mm. your guys' skin looks. Mm, I have great. a lot of makeup on right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really <laughs> layered the like, concealer. I've got a lip one right now. You know, it's all about just like helping make you feel better helping with you know the confidence and just treating yourself you know the yeah. thing that i loved was you were always so much like you're not like over here like here's how to get no acne because no acne yeah. is the most beautiful you're much more like you know learn to love the skin that you have yep. and not being like ashamed to have mm-hmm. acne and yeah. back in the day when it was when i was like really struggling i was purging for like months and months because i just started a new medication and I wouldn't wear makeup because it hurt. It was just mm-hmm. like painful mm-hmm. to do anything. So I would like get on camera or whatever and people would comment like, uh, you seen a dermatologist? Like what's going on? You ever cleaned your <laughs> face before? So mean. God, and I like, luckily it wasn't, it didn't really affect me that much, but I did, I could see like, wow, it really is such a thing that people deal with of like trying to cover their face or not wanting to go in public. Mm-hmm. And yeah. which in reality, I'm like, dude, so many people ha- struggle with acne yeah. at least at one point yeah. in their life. Oh, yeah. It's like the most normal thing to have. It's so normal. And it's, it's, I'm really hoping there will be a cultural shift because so much of the conversation within the cosmetic community, specifically skincare, is like, here's how you get rid of all your breakouts, no acne, and this and that, like what you were saying. I, I always want my content to be supportive if people are treating those concerns. But my biggest thing is all about skin health. Take mm-hmm. care of the health of your skin, whatever that looks like for you. Some people will struggle with breakouts forever. Some people will you know, have wrinkles and yeah. mm-hmm. I hate the word like imperfections, like just skin challenges like that they will face forever. Or, and we yeah. should never shame people like right. for that. I remember when I was first blowing up on TikTok, like people were tagging me in random videos of someone who happened to have like a bad breakout or happened to have like skin damage where they weren't asking for advice where they weren't looking for skin recommendations oh, and i'm like so mean we need to shift the conversation we're having around yeah. were they looking for you to like stitch them and like, be like oh my god like this is what I, you, need, you need to do or whatever yeah like, oh, i'm like, not asking <laughs> it would be so many people like i would have creators block me because they're like and they'd be like sorry i'm not blocking you because i don't like you it's just i'm so tired of people tagging you in my comments because they think i need skincare advice and i'm like that's not fair to you either You're it's, like, it's uh, just messed up you know i'm like skincare should not be about like getting perfect skin it right. should be about taking care of your health and having a moment of just like uh you know mindfulness self-care time it should not you know we really i think need to shift the conversation from what it has been for so long just about you know like self-care i completely agree that it's so it really can be such a huge form of self-care and i Mm -hmm. never saw it that way i used to just think it as this annoying chore that i had to do before (laughs) bed and like most nights i wouldn't even Oh, like, dude. Take my makeup off. I was really oh, bad back, back in the day. Back in the day, I used to sleep in my makeup all the time. Like, yeah, I never too. washed my face. Even like, when God, I am drunk. No. <laughs> even when I'm, oh, like, yeah. completely wasted coming home from a club, I wash my face now. Yes. Like, I will not go to bed there without washing go. my Dude, I'll block out, wake up, and I'm like, yeah. still wash my yeah. face. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good job. Yep. <laughs> but it really is such a relaxing thing. I look forward to washing my face every night. I'm like, yeah. I get my baby to sleep, and it's time for me to do my skincare. I love a good mask double cleansing it just mm. feels so like refreshing it's there's like a meditative nice... quality totally. to it totally. let alone like the benefit for yeah. your skin you know that's mm-hmm. the best part and especially for like mother like young yeah. mothers or like um people you know who live really chaotic lifestyles or whatever i'm like it's like five minutes of just you time it totally. is at the very it's so minimum. you time i know it's Love so that. good what's your favorite mask Ooh, for like like, like what anything like your number what's one what's the most like for enjoy enjoyable like enjoy relaxation for enjoyment <laughs> oh honestly the peter thomas roth cucumber facial mask oh is that good i love that one i, I think it's because like um it takes away like any redness that my skin may be experiencing whether it's because of like cold wind sun damage whatever it may be like mm. there's a physical like i can notice a difference right after i use really? it and the redness being brought down it's really hydrating to the skin. You can leave it on kind of for however long you want. So mm. like if you get busy with something else or like multitasking, mm. I'm not like worried about like seven minutes. I have to like yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. wash it off. Um, 
it's like honestly my personal favorite. I, and I think I'm not a huge mask person as much as I used to be because really? I'm all about like serums, like mm. get that Ooh. daily treatment. Yeah. You know? I'd rather get the daily treatment than like once every two weeks, like try and like bulldoze all the dead skin cells yeah. off my face, whatever, maybe. But, um, bulldoze. But, <laughs> but I really like that cucumber one is like, mm. Okay, so I, would I gotta it. look Wait, into that. Do you guys have like favorite skincare products, like your top ones? Definitely the the Green Clean. That's yeah, my that's top. probably my mm-hmm. top. Is the that Youth to the damn People damn spinach, pleasure. and these all have come from you too. Um, <laughs> love first aid, and then I really like the um ah oh, the cold plunge. Do you know what that? Oh, Ole, oh, Henriks, Ole Henriksen. Cold is it Ole Henriksen? Or plunge mask, love the green that. one. It's yeah. just so it feels so good. I mm-hmm. like that refreshing feeling, especially like in a hot bath. The I need to do more masks. Ooh. It's good. It's I don't like do any cold masks. I, I like mask. Summer Fridays too. I like that I brand. Oh yeah, isn't there that one like? Purple one the jet everyone, lag yeah, mask. The is jet so lag. Good. I just yeah. sometimes use that as a moisturizer if I like really mm-hmm. need some heavy moisture. But. It basically works as a moisturizer. Like that one's yeah. great. Yeah. It is. It's great. And it's like a big bottle will last you mm-hmm. a long time. Mm-hmm. So you only need to use a ton of it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, good, good good I love that you guys are like so knowledgeable about like skincare products and like thanks to you. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I love geeking out about this stuff. Yeah, I know, it's fun. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't use a lot of masks. I keep using the ordinary one, but that's more like to get the shit off. I need something that's yeah. like that calming. And relax, helpful for like redness and pig- hyperpigmentation. My skin yeah. gets so pissed. I have a zit, and then it just you know it'll be gone, but it'll red be a red spot for like months. I'm oh. like, listen, bitch, you <laughs> have not been paying rent for a long time. Get off of this. <laughs> it drives me crazy. <laughs> I mean, you were talking about using tretinoin. Has that yes, been able to that help? has helped a lot. Okay, good. That's what really what like saved my skin in many ways because yeah. I was struggling because so. that's like pretty much like the best of the best to yeah be honest if you yeah. want to get rid of skin damage tretinoin will you know take you completely by surprise she's amazing. amazing yeah she yeah. is incredible. you guys got those pro skincare routines now Ooh. yeah Ooh. seriously thanks to you though well, <laughs> well i'm glad i could help um you steve's dove soap so i've come a long way oh my god it's only up from there <laughs> oh my god yeah dude someone in high school now i'm thinking about it told me to use bar soap dove yeah, soap that's what my dermatologist like, okay. told me in high school and I used Dove it, and soap. I was like, I don't think this is working very well. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my stripping gosh. it. I was doing it twice a day. I used oh. to never wear sunscreen. That was like my big yeah. problem. You know, I know, like I'm anywhere in my body, you know, I wear it everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, yes. I don't see the light of day a lot because I'm inside all the time. But honestly, yeah. that's the best thing you can do. Whenever people ask me, like, if I could only use like one product, what's one product you recommend using? Sunscreen, because ninety percent of like skin damage is due to sun exposure alone. Yeah. So. What is one product? What is your favorite product besides sunscreen? If you had to pick one product, serum. Okay, get, hit me with like a good serum because I don't use Ooh. any serums. Okay, I mean like besides my own. I'll, I'll do besides my own. <laughs> hey, I mean I, your yours is good too, though. Yeah. I need to try it. I just yeah. I love serums because you get the most interesting active ingredients that will deliver results, like and give you visible results in your skin and like where you can really target so many different concerns. So say if it's like, um, I love like the first day beauty niacinamide serum because it does such a good job of like um, really controlling oil production throughout the day and hydrating my skin, but not making it too, uh, you know, greasy mm. or oily. Um, I love like the Bliss Clear Genius Liquid Peel because it has exfoliating ingredients, but they aren't too strong, but they work to also hydrate the skin simultaneously and retain moisture like i feel like there's just so many good serums out there and that's where you can get the most fun with skincare like Mm. really experimental so do you use niacinamide in the morning then to control oil production i typically use it both during morning and night because niacinamide in my humble opinion is the best skincare ingredient out there well tretinoin might be like Mm -hmm. okay (laughs) if it's like not prescription (laughs) yeah both to get those can be used together yeah they can because niacinamide works with any other ingredient It reduces excess oiliness in the skin, but it strengthens the moisture barrier. It calms down redness and sensitivity. It works for pretty much any skin type or skin sensitivity, so anyone can use it. It's not super expensive. You can Mm. find it in a good amount of products. It's just like that. It's the daddy ingredient. It's just so Daddy. She's the daddy. (laughs) Are you able to use vitamin C in niacinamide? I thought that was one that like Con- conflicts um i so different people say different things and it really depends i'd say like if you're using relatively minimal niacinamide and you're not mm-hmm. using like a super strong vitamin c formula mm-hmm. then it's fine but it, in my personal recommendation uh vitamin c can be used during the day 
niacinamide can be used overnight. Okay. Niacinamide is one of That's those ingredients you can use at any time, but vitamin C, I feel like you really get those benefits with like the anti-damage, anti-pollution, mm. antioxidant protection throughout the day. Carla, you want to hit him with your one question you oh, had? Yeah. Oh, hit yeah. Me. I've been waiting. I've literally yes. been waiting patiently over here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, for the last like three weeks, month now, I've been washing my face in the morning with quick oats. Like just oh, oatmeal. Okay. He like, says, yeah. "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no!" But I've doing. I've been doing just like a little, a little pinch full of of um oats. I mm-hmm. soak in my hand. I milk them oats. <laughs> <laughs> milk those oats. Yeah. And then I like, I like, like the oat. The oat milk is kind of like um, like a water, like yeah. a rice water. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yep. And then I'll do that a few times, like whatever. I'll whatever. And then, um, once like the oats are nice and soft in my hand, I'll like gently rub them into my skin and um and then like leave it on while i'm brushing my teeth or whatever and then rinse it off and i oh my swear God, wow. my skin has never been as soft as it yeah. is like I, I it like it makes it lets me like not wear so much makeup like i'm not i'm only wearing like blush and stuff today but like it <gasps> wow way to brag no but i do you have like what's your what's your like reaction to me saying <laughs> I wash my face with oatmeal? She's I a mean, DIY skincare girl. Yeah, you have all the DIY content creators shaking in their boots because that's some dedication, man. I am impressed. Like, but I'd say so. Oat is one of my favorite ingredients for reducing uh, sensitivity and it's irritation super, in the face. Yeah, and it's amazing for helping with the moisture barrier, strengthening your skin. It's really good for people of any different skin type. Mm-hmm. I've personally never tried what you're doing before. Like okay. I, be I would honestly you think it's really silly. No, no, please be honest. You <laughs> no, think it's silly. It's amazing. I'd say like normally I wouldn't recommend that just because I, I don't think people realistically would go through the kind of the steps of like. Oh, I love it. I love milking my oats. Honestly, I, I love it. <laughs> Farmer Corelli over She's here milking. Over there. <laughs> milking. <laughs> oh, I, like talk about dedication, and I but. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I actually think that's great. And for some people, it can be really beneficial because if you have sensitivity to a bunch of different ingredients, for example, and like, then it can be helpful. Also, it's not I, like I wash my face at night with like an actual cleanser. Okay, and like, good, I do, like good. I do like after my oat milk, I um, <laughs> I like I do like do the, I do the rest of my skin routine. You know what I mean? In the morning, you're only washing off like the night creams. You know what I mean? So it's not exactly. you need that much of a of a deep clean. You don't. Um, yeah. And I honestly, I don't know. I think this oat milk oatmeal is life I'm gonna it be honest I'm me. gonna have to try that please do like, and please I tell me what make you a think TikTok about it that you should really fun. <laughs> yeah no I mean not everyone needs to cleanse their skin in the morning uh because sometimes you just have dry skin and you're only removing the products from the night before but I think that's like a great way of like hydrating your skin getting that but you're still taking care of the most important steps of your skincare routine like at night you know? and on another note and I don't know if this is even connected but I have a little bit of I have a little scar right here on my face. Oh, okay. And I got it like mm, I don't see anything. <laughs> no, she literally has such good like skin. I'm so jealous. Skin. Well, you don't see her here? It's like a little mark. It's like a little mark. Um no, I so like the oat milk, I think it's been like evening my skin tone. Oh. And like my scar is not nearly as like prominent wow. as it used to be. And like I said, I've only been doing the oats for like three months. Mm-hmm. Um, so dang, that's impressive. Like yeah. That it's been able to have that transformative. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe it's all placebo. Maybe it's in my head, but I don't know. <laughs> hey, Sydney has a skincare question too. Oh, yeah, I what's do, up? I do. I was curious because you said you like serums. So I have like yeah. really bad redness like when I take off all my makeup and everything. And I actually really need to work on having a better skincare routine. Because... She uses Dawn soap. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> dial soap. <laughs> Not the dial. <dime. laughs> no, no, I don't. But I don't actually really use a face wash. But oh, Wait, I, really? Like, like on days that Dang. I wear makeup, I use that pharmacy stuff and then I rinse God. it off. But if I don't wear makeup that day, I don't. Oh, so you use a cleansing balm without a cleanser afterwards. Yeah. Ooh. Dang, your skin looks so good. But I get redness. Like if I don't wear any makeup, like naturally, like, on, like my cheeks, and my nose. Oh, okay. So I was curious if you have any recommendations for like a serum or just anything because oh. I've tried a lot. Yeah, you tried the Dr. Jart. Mm. Grass. Yeah, and it just a set of something. Dr. Fart grass. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 12 years old. Sorry. But well, I was like, maybe, maybe, maybe it's because I'm not washing my face when I'm supposed to be. Like, I try yeah. to, but it gets so dry. Like, any cleanser I use, like, my face will just, like, 
that feel that nasty. Mm. Tight I hate feeling. that tight feeling after you. Oh yeah, so that probably just means your skin is really dehydrated, and you don't want to use like a really strong cleanser. I mean, honestly, have you heard of Crave Beauty Great Barrier Relief? serum it is my holy grail product like mm. besides my own products i'd probably have to say it's the best product i've ever used in my life incredible Crave beauty i've never heard of that oh yeah so it was founded by a content creator her name is leah Yu. um oh, and wow. she's it's like besides my own brand my favorite you can brand plug ever. your own <laughs> brand <I'm>, it's okay <laughs> no it's literally yes. the best products ever great barrier relief yeah um so every time i use it because i struggle with redness similarly to you Restores my skin barrier, brings down the redness. Dang. My skin is glowing. I love using it overnight. Highly, highly recommend. And it's not too expensive. Yeah. I'm buying it right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally holy grail product. Amazing. Do you use it before like moisturizer? Because I do use um, mm-hmm. Skin Fix moisturizer. <gasps> yeah. And You're stuff? using the good one. Oh, I, I love, love it. it. I love Skin Fix. Like, so I put one it back on all the time. Okay. What cleanser should she use? Do you think she should take do another one and do a double cleanse or... I mean, honestly, if you're looking for something that's not overly stripping, really good for like dry skin, the Crave Beauty is one of my personal favorites. Um, oh, they have a the cleanser wanna, too? Yeah. I'm telling you like incredible products. Wow. Their one, uh, it reduces redness. It's really hydrating to the skin. Very, very gentle. It's the one I use whenever my skin is freaking out, super dry, will react to anything, have a reaction. Yeah. Super good. good one. Wow. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, of course. It. Of course. Love it. I'm here with the tips. I love all the questions. Yay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, if you love questions, it is time for our speed question round. Yes. Yes. Okay. Rapid fire. All right. Rapid, rapid fire. fire. So three three minutes on three the minutes. clock. Ready? All right. So, Brad Mondo did your hair blue a few years ago. That was amazing. <gasps> that was so yes. good. What is the next color you would like to try? <gasps> oh, my gosh. Uh, Seafoam green. That would be good. Love it. Most important step in a skincare routine besides SPF. (laughs) I was going to say SPF. (laughs) Um, Moisturizing. Yeah. Rihanna or Beyonce? Beyonce. Always. Best value product on the market. Product. Like, (laughs) Like best best value. Best, but get the most for the best price. Like skincare products? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cleanser. What like, kind? Oh, a specific cleanser? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> probably the Vanna Cream cleanser at Target. Super cheap. Boom. Very good formula. Best moisturizer. Best value or just best moisturizer, just period? Best, best moisturizer, best period. Moisturizer. You had to use one for the rest of your life. <sighs> Honestly, it sells by Hiram Nice and mine. It's uh, good. Moisturizer. It's, it's very incredible. good. Thank Love you. It. Okay, what's the worst product on the market? Uh, you don't have to ask this if you don't want to. St. Ives, Apricot Scrub. Dang. Uh, yeah, I really don't like Poor that. Poor girl. One. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> okay, what would be your death row meal? That's a good one. Oh, oh honestly, um, just really good macaroni and cheese. Yes. Oh, my favorite. So good. Oh. What's your favorite brand of mac and cheese? Is it bad to say crap? No, no, same. Very Kraft, good. But the creamy kind. Yes. You know, yeah. fucks me. It's up. so damn good. Do you prefer so good. noodles or shapes? Both, so I can eat two okay. boxes worth of mac and cheese and fries. Oh, so I'll get you're like speaking the my one. language. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like seriously a problem. I've had to like you know like uh, hold off so I don't relapse. So good. I think I'm gonna make <laughs> that tonight. Actually, <laughs> okay. What is the best splurge product on the market? Um, honestly, the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Barrier Peptide Cream. It's not too expensive. It's fifty dollars, but like it is incredible. Like the results you get. It's like the one luxury product. Sorry, that's not rapid fire. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Okay. Uh, Disney Channel or Nickelodeon when you were growing up? Nickelodeon. I was allowed to watch Disney. Mm. Interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. Okay, what's one place that you have never traveled that you would like to? India. India. Definitely. What is the most painful spot for zits, in your opinion? Uh, Probably the, in my experience, jawline. Really? Yeah. Mine's like the right lip. on the bone. Oh, oh yeah. lip's a good one too. Shit yeah. mm-hmm. hurts. Or the ear. Mm-hmm. Janelle wrote favorite pickle. <laughs> favorite, <laughs> okay. Favorite pickles. brand of pickles. Favorite do you type, like pickles? We're really into pickles I, here. Oh, I do love pickles. I love the dill mini. Um, what's the, the main brand? Uh, the most popular. Classic. Classic. Yes. Lawson. Lawson. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The cats or dogs? Dogs. Favorite EDM artist? Millennium. Okay. Mountains or ocean? Oh, Ugh, ocean. Ocean. Ugh, All right. Ocean, yeah. oh. That was three minutes. Woo! Wow. We Good made job. It. You oh did. Gosh. You got most of them. Yeah. I kind of wish you guys answered them too. I'd be curious to know for you guys. We should have <laughs> um, just bounced back and forth. Nickelodeon, <laughs> Lip, Disney Channel for me. But the true dogs. Rihanna and Beyonce, though. I have to know Here's that it. one. 
<gasps> We've been debating about this. I'm right Ooh, now. I'm in, a, I'm in a Rihanna mm-hmm. phase right now. Okay. I don't know. I can't really pick. I go Beyonce because her body of work is just so much longer. Yeah. True. She is Plus that like dancing is like yeah. Oh. She's incredible. Yeah. Honestly, amazing performer. Yeah, yeah amazing. Performer. But they're both amazing. Like oh. to end the show. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. If you're interested. And you don't have so to random. <laughs> but last week we discovered these jelly fruit things. Have you ever seen these people do this on TikTok where they like bite them and it bursts in their mouth? Oh no, I was thinking of the ones that you like suck up and they. Really no, you should bite it. We'll ones. demonstrate. If you want to do it, you do not these. have to. But here's how it works. Kendall, please demonstrate. Well, it is like sucking it up. There's literally no point to it other than oh, that's fun oh. and it gets everywhere sometimes. <laughs> Love that for me. Yeah, let me try it. I want to try one of these. Do you have like a color um, you I recommend? would say the mango that looks like a be- kidney oh, bean I is good. Mango. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wait, mm-hmm. so you hold it on the side and bite the outside? Yeah, you, the bite, outside? Yeah. So you mm-hmm. bite the outside, but you got to kind of like aim it towards the back. So put the pressure and you'll feel like where it's going to And pop. it may fly out the front too. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to really commit. Mm. Do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, instead of shots on the stash, we it was like a tiny hole. Yeah, is it supposed to burst. Yeah, it's supposed to get yeah. bigger. I know. Well, I've had it tiny does like a, Yeah, <laughs> tiny hole. We want big holes here. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a napkin. Thank you. Oh my god, I love this. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe we'll just have all our guests try jelly fruits. I think it jelly should fruits, be a tradition. Baby. I know. I think, I think it's good. Right? These are good. Yeah. It's it's delicious. Experience. I'm just terrified of spilling on the mic or everywhere. Oh, it's like oh. the first time I did it went all over the mic. It's so oh funny. These are new mic caps and Jan- mine's always been so dirty and Janelle's like, oh, you got a new clean one now and look. Yeah, your foundation's already on it, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I love I to I was like, Hiram deserves a clean one. If he came and saw the, the fuck we were recording on before, he'd probably be like, never mind, I'm good. <laughs> it's okay, no judgment. Your whole setup is better than anything I have. So uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. This has been so much fun. Yeah. Such a treat to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I can't believe you like wanted to come on our show and yeah i've oh just been God. watching you for so long i think mm-hmm. you're just such a wonderful person and yeah, such a thank light you. yeah such a light so. thank you you guys are incredible coming. like i'm seriously so glad i got to come thank you for even thinking anytime to you want to come honor. again seriously like, come yeah. back we'll do more of our shenanigans here on the stash we can do another just a position which make sure you guys go check yes. out just a position as well um janelle and i did i think a pretty in- interesting interview we yeah t- we got into a lot of stuff yeah so. absolutely yeah. where can yeah, people find awesome. you online yeah, so they can just find me Hiram on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. Uh, yeah, just Hiram, H Y R A M. And What's your that? podcast is also on YouTube. Yes, podcast, Just a Position, not with an X, but with an S. You can find it on YouTube or anywhere you listen to your podcast episodes. We have new episodes out every Thursday. And Yay! I'm excited for ours to go up. It'll yeah, me too. I know that's the hardest part with recording on Mondays is I always get so excited to see him on Thursdays. I'm always asking <laughs> Crowley like, is it done yet? Is, is it, it done, done yet? yet? I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Um, all right. Well, I guess this is it. But yeah, yeah. thank you so thank much. You so it was much. so you fun. Awesome. Thanks thank for hanging out with us. Yep. And we'll see you on the next session. But until then, keep it fresh. Keep it fresh.